All right, so we have taught, we've started rationals. We talked about um, asymptotes the other day, and um, somebody said to me last period that uh, most of what we've gotten in the last week or so has been review, and it has. And this is, most of what we do today is probably a review as well. Some of it's even a review from what we've done together. Um, but there are some new things in here, like why we are revisiting these slant asymptotes, all right? So this slant asymptote, what's another word for slant asymptote? Oblique, okay, oblique. So when we are given this function, when we want to go and find out stuff about it so we can eventually go and graph it, the first thing we're gonna do is factor, right? And so when I factor the numerator, it's gonna give me x minus three, x minus one over x plus two. Right? So then having that can help me find things do I have any point discontinuity? No, so there's none of that. Do I have any vertical asymptotes? Yes, that would be x equals what? Negative two. Do I have any horizontal asymptotes? No, because why? It's top heavy, all right. It's top heavy means none. So slant asymptotes, could I possibly have one of those? Yes, because the numerator is one degree higher than the denominator. So in order to go find that, I'm gonna do some division. I would choose synthetic division here. So this is negative two. This form right here doesn't help me with that because I need this form right here to go into this. So the part that goes inside of here is gonna be one, negative four, and three, right? So I'm gonna bring down my one, get negative two, negative six, 12, and 15. So we know that our slant asymptote then is y equals x minus six. Okay, does that make sense to you? All right, so we know all of that. And then what we know also is that we just ignore the remainder, but we're not sure why. That's what we're gonna talk about right here. So this f of x, I'm just gonna rewrite that right here. So f of x, is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 3 over x plus 2. All right, so when I do my division, this part gives me my slant asymptote, right? And then this is my remainder, which for the slant asymptote we ignore. However, what is happening here is when I actually divide this out, when I do this, this tells me that this reduced form is x minus 6 plus what? 15 over x plus 2. So if I was to use the remainder, then what I have is actually the same function. Do you see how it's the same thing? And if I wanted to get it back in this form, basically I just get, a, get common denominators and I put it all back together, right? So if I didn't ignore the remainder, then I would just end up graphing the same function twice. But this remainder, what it gives me, so let's look at this graph here. I've got, this is my function, all right? The, um, this is my, Oh, I, for, I know what we forgot to do, but here's my x-axis and my y-axis. From this right here, what are my zeros? What are the zeros of this function? Oh. One and three, right? So the x, my x-axis here, and we're counting by fours to get to 20 there. So here are my x-intercepts, one and three. They're really close together because I'm counting by fours. My vertical asymptote at x equals negative two, and then here's my oblique asymptote is y equals x minus six, okay? So asymptotes, remember that is what our functions are approaching, but they never actually get there. So as x approaches infinity, the y values are approaching x minus six, right? Does that make sense to you? So when we get to this, and we look at what's happening over here, do you see how it's, if I'm at x equals four, right here, this is where x equals four, and it's that far from the asymptote? At x equals eight, it's that far, and then 12, it's that far, and then 16. And do you see how, oops, that's my slant here. Do you see how it gets, gets closer and closer and closer, right? It's gonna get closer and closer and closer. This part right here, this remainder, is the distance the function is from that asymptote. So the remainder that we ignore to get the line, which is 15 over x plus two here, the larger and larger and larger x gets, then the smaller and smaller and smaller this fraction gets. Does that make sense to you? 
And this fraction, this remainder right here, is the distance, the function is from the slant asymptote. So when we start talking more about limits, we've talked about in behavior, but limits themselves are, are in behavior is part of limits. Um, so when you have a fraction and the denominator, or the numerator stays the same, the denominator approaches infinity, then the fraction itself, that value is approaching zero because it's getting tinier and tinier and tinier, right? So the limit as x approaches infinity here is zero. So it's getting closer and closer and closer, but it'll never actually get there. Okay, so that's what the remainder tells you. We're not going to use that in anything, but I just wanted to let you know there's a reason we just drop it off. If we don't, we have the same function, and it does give us something, not anything we need to look at right now, but it does give you the distance it is from the asymptote. Okay, we good with that? All right, so let's talk about some things, again, that are not brand new, but order of which you do these things is super duper important. So when we go through these and we are going to find the domain, you always find the domain first, the first step before reducing. If you wait until after you reduce, you are likely to miss something. You may not, depending on the function, but you may, depending, again, on what the function is. So your x-intercepts you find after reducing, which means it's after, what happens when you reduce? What do you, when you reduce it, what does that tell you you have? But when you cancel things out, that's a hole, right? You have a hole. So it's basically after you find the point discontinuity. All right, so then what that means is you are finding the zeros of the numerator. And we've already done that, and you had done that before, so that's no big shock there. But you have you find domain, then you reduce. After you reduce is when you find your x-intercepts. If you do any of this stuff you know, out of, out of order, you're likely to have the wrong stuff there. Another word for x-intercepts would be our zeros, right? This could be our zeros, our roots, our solutions, whatever. But if I say x-intercept, what form does your answer have to be in? Ordered pair. X-intercepts means ordered pair. Zeros means it can be set notation. Does that make sense? So then your y-intercepts, again, something that you are capable of doing, but you also find this after reducing, which means that's after finding point discontinuity. So to find the y-intercept, just like any time you've ever found the y-intercept, you substitute 0 in for x and solve for y, which is the same thing as finding f of 0. Then mine says find the domain there. I don't know why mine is wrong and yours is right. Yours says that on the top of the back. Mine just disappeared. Okay, so we're all good. We can find all this stuff, right? And again, some of it I know we've already done together, and it's simple, but di some different things are going to come up that I just want to make sure I talk through with you real quick. All right, so let's flip it over. So yours up at the top says find the domain. I hope it just should because mine doesn't. But So the first thing I need to do, even though I'm doing it before I'm reducing, I do want to go ahead and factor this. So f of x is equal to, I get x minus 2 in the numerator, and in the denominator I get x plus 2, x minus 2. So what's the only thing that I have to look at to find domain in a rational? What's the only thing that affects the domain in a rational function? the asymptotes, which would be the denominator. The asymptotes in the holes, right? And so that would be the denominator. So even here, am I able to cancel something out? Yes. Do I do that before I find domain? No. So even though it's the asymptotes and the holes, it's whatever's in the denominator. Because once I cancel it out, that hole is gone, but that still affects my domain because x cannot equal 2. Does that make sense to you? So regardless of what else I've got going on, right now, before I do anything, is when I find domain. So my domain... It's all real numbers except for what? X cannot equal 2 or negative 2. So it's the set of all x's such that x cannot equal plus or minus 2. 
And then, yes, we can cancel things out and move on, but all we're looking for right here is domain. Little side note, though, um, I don't think this comes up on the homework or, I mean, it doesn't come up on the notes. Let's say that, uh, that I actually had two asymptotes, which I don't here, but if I had an asymptote at plus or minus two, this is fine for my domain, but when I go to write my asymptotes, I don't put my vertical asymptotes or x equals plus or minus two. Those are lines, so it's x equals two and x equals negative two. Does that make sense? Because it's different than saying like this point kind of thing. All right. All right, so then let's move on to number two. Can I factor or reduce or anything? No. So I can just look at this and figure out my domain. It's the set of all x's such that x cannot equal what? Negative 11. And that's it. Three, I can factor. So this is x plus three times x minus three. And then x plus five times x minus five. I can't reduce, but even if I could, I don't care at this point. I need to find my domain. And that's the set of all x's such that x cannot equal what? Plus or minus five, okay? So piece of cake, right? And we haven't actually found domain yet, but you've been finding it, you just kind of didn't know. All right, so the next part, which again, we have done, but we've gotta make sure we got the order in here right. We wanna find the x-intercepts, but honestly, I don't wanna find the x-intercepts, because that means I'd have to write them as what? Ordered pairs. So we're gonna change this to zeros, because on the homework it actually says zeros, and I just forgot to change it on here. So then, first thing I do is factor. So f of x is equal to, and I get x plus two in the numerator, the denominator, I'm gonna get x plus four times x minus two. All right, so can I reduce anything? No, can't reduce anything, and so my zeros, which I can write in set notation since they're zeros, are what? Negative two. Negative two. My zeros come from the numerator, and it is negative two. All right, so number two, g of x. I need to factor, so I'm gonna get x minus five times x plus four over x plus four times x minus four. All right, so can I reduce anything here? Yes, all right, so these are gonna cancel out, right? Which means that g of x is equal to x minus five over x minus four. Now all I'm being asked for here are the zeros. However, when I rewrite this, this by itself is not a true statement. This isn't exactly what g of x is. g of x is this with a hole, right? So even though nobody asked me for point discontinuity, I can't ignore it. I have point discontinuity here. What's the x value for that? Negative four, because that's what got canceled out, right? And then I've got to find my y value, so I have to substitute it in here. It's gonna give me negative four minus five over negative four minus four. So what's the y value? Is it negative nine eighths? Nine eighths. Okay. So there's my point discontinuity. Now I can find my zeros, and what is it? Five. It's not negative four and five. I can't find it before I reduce. I have to find it after I reduce. But this together is my function, right? Not by itself. All right, are we all good? Awesome. So let's look at number three. So I can't reduce, I can't factor, this is what I have, so what are my zeros? There aren't any, right? Okay, so what, in the past when you haven't had any, what do you write as your answer? None, okay? So none is a correct answer because there aren't any, but if we're gonna stay consistent with set notation, none is not set notation. To write that you have none in set notation, it looks like this. Okay, that's it. Because what's in there? Nothing. nothing. There's none in there, it's none. So here's a little side note here. This is what's called the empty set, all right? The empty set can look like this. It's basically set notation that's empty, hence empty set, right? Or it looks like this. 
So there are some people that are making zero, zero with a line through it. And I've told you, you can't, that means something else. That means the empty set. It does not mean zero. And so what you're saying, you don't, you think it's cute or whatever. I don't know, but that's a big fat no-no. Um, here's what you don't do is the set like this, okay? And I started to put a circle with a line through it last period, but then that's like another, so I'm just going to put a big no here. Because what this says is this is a set that contains an empty set. That make sense to you? Like, that's the same two things. It's being redundant. So it's this or this, but this really is what we're going to be doing. This is my answer. It's an empty set, okay? Which means the same thing as none, sort of, but it's none is not set notation. Okay, you all okay on that? All right, so then number four. I factor g of x is equal to x, oops, x minus 4 times x minus, oh, not what, I did make it, x plus 2. Sorry, I don't even know what I'm writing here. Okay, x plus 2 all over x plus 3 times x minus 3. Okay, can I reduce it all? Nope. So what are my zeros? 4 and negative 2, so negative 2. So you can find zeros. I just want to make sure that you know what order to do it in. You have to do it after you cancel things out and what to do with the empty set. Right. So then we find y-intercepts. Well, to find y-intercepts, what I'm doing is finding f of 0, right? So f of 0 is going to be equal to negative 3 over 11. Or anytime you have that, if you just cancel out anything that has a variable in it, because it's going to zero out, you basically end up with that. So your y-intercept then is, what's the x value? Zero, and then negative three elevenths. Then in number two, I factor f of x is equal to x plus three over x minus three over x plus three. So can I cancel anything out? Yes, and when I do, that tells me I have point discontinuity that I cannot ignore. What's the x value for that? Negative 3. So that means then f of x equals x minus 3 with this point discontinuity. What would my y value be? Negative 6. And then my y-intercept is what? Just negative 3? Zero negative 3. And that has to be an order pair. Everybody good? All right, so then number three, I need, oh, my board is frozen. All right, so um, it'll catch up with me in a minute. There we go. Uh, F, uh, or actually this is G. G of zero is equal to one over zero squared. So for my y-intercept, what is it? Okay, the, the value I get is undefined, right? Because I can't divide by zero. My y-intercept isn't undefined, though. That's not my answer. My answer is, in this case, it is none. Because this is not a set notation thing. Empty set would make absolutely no sense here because we're not writing these in sets. There are no y-intercepts for you to use, so the answer here is none. Okay, we good with that? So it's not just about being able to find this stuff. It's also being able to know how to write it correctly. All right, so then on number four, can I factor... The numerator? No. The denominator? No. So if I can't factor them, then factors aren't going to cancel out, right? And since I don't, all I'm worried about here is the y-intercept, it's no big deal. When you substitute in 0 for x, remember, if I just zero out all of the variables, I'm left with g of 0 being 11 over negative 4, which means my y-intercept is 0, negative 11 fourths. And then that negative there, it was 11 over negative 4 is actually what I got out of there. I can move it to right outside the fraction, right? Could I also write it as negative 11 over 4? Yeah, it's all the same thing, but I don't get to put it on both. Make sure you know how to handle signs with the fractions. Any questions at all? Awesome. Now go ahead and glue or tape this in now so you're not scrambling right before the next test. I'm going to hand you your homework, and before you freak out, Oh my God, it's a packet. So I'm going to tell you right now, if by the end of the day your arm hurts from carrying this thing around, I sincerely apologize. But I actually changed this from a front, page, front side only one page document. 
Okay? It was one-sided on one piece of paper, which would have been a nightmare. So now it's two-sided on two pieces of paper, so you have room to do stuff. All right? It's, only, it's, not that, it's not as bad as it looks. So before you start whining about it. And we're going to do number one together, just to make sure we all have the right idea of what's happening here. All right, so let's look at number one. Okay, number one here. Now, in all these, you have this blank space down here, and this space is for you to be able to do some work. And then you have to find all of these pieces. So I'm going to start with the first thing I'm going to do is take this and factor it. So f of x is equal to x times x minus 1 over x plus 2. And then before I do anything else, I find what? The domain. So what's the domain here? Set of all x's such that x cannot equal what? Negative 2. Okay. Then I find the zeros. What are they? 0 and 1. Okay. Then I find the y-intercept. So that's f of 0, which is 0 times negative 1 over 2. What is that? Zero. Right? Once you've got zero going on in the numerator, then you're done. It doesn't matter what's happening in the denominator. Do you have any point discontinuities? No, because nothing's going to cancel out. Do you have any vertical asymptotes? Yes. And that's at x equals what? Negative 2. So to see the other day why I was writing x cannot equal negative 2, and I know that threw some people off, but and then all of a sudden it can equal negative 2, because we're saying two different things here. All right, horizontal asymptotes, none, right? Because it is what is what? It's top heavy, so it is none. And then the numerator is exactly one degree higher than the denominator, so do I have a slant asymptote? Yes, so I need to find that by dividing. Um, synthetic division works here, so that's what I would choose. Put a negative two out here. Inside, I would put what? Ne one, negative one, set it. And zero, I have to have something for that constant term. Okay. So then this will give me one, negative two, eight, six. So I don't really care about the six. I know the distance from the function to the asymptote is going to be um, six over x plus two, but it doesn't really do anything for me. So my slant asymptote then is y equals what? x minus three. Okay, easy enough. So some different things are going to happen. Some of them will have some things. Some of them will have others. Make sure you know when to put. Nothing should be left blank. So it's either none or it's the empty set whenever that is appropriate. Okay. This really shouldn't take you that long. They go pretty quickly. Okay. Any questions at all? All right. Good deal.